perfect tense. Okay, let's look at the paradigm for the perfect tense. Now, if you remember our noun paradigms, we had gender and number. So we had a grid for nouns, something like this, masculine and feminine, down one side, and then across the top we had number, singular and plural, and we had dual as well. We won't worry with dual for the for the verbs. So we had gender <coughs> and we had number. Now verbs have, in addition, something called person. First, second, and third person. And generally we talk about it in this order, PGN, person, gender, number. So what we'll do here for our chart for verbs, let's draw a line here just to make it clear, we'll have third person with masculine and feminine, singular and plural, and then we'll have second person with masculine and feminine, and singular and plural as well, a grid, four, four pieces here and four there. And then we'll have, let's actually extend this a bit, then we'll have first person. Now first person has no distinction in, in gender, so it's just common. What you call common when there's, when it's the same form for masculine and singular. Okay. Now the reason that we go uh, three, two, one, third person is he, second person is you, first person is, is I, it's a bit odd. In most of the languages where you do paradigms, at least Western languages, we tend to go one, two, three. Um, the reason is because this form here, the third masculine singular form, is the base form that the rest of the paradigm is built on, and it's also the form of the verb that you find in the dictionary. So if you've studied Greek or Latin, then this is going to feel a little bit backwards. Um, but you get used to it. So let me we'll just do our translation here quickly. Let's change colors. We'll go to yellow. So third masculine singular is he. So he ran, a verb that would have he as a subject. And we'll see that the subject is embedded right into the verb. The ending, in this case, for the perfect, will include, or will indicate, that it's 3MS. So you have the subject embedded right there. So third feminine singular would be she. He could also be it, and she could be it if you're talking about an inanimate object that is feminine or that is masculine. Um, plural, we have they. Now, in this paradigm, the perfect paradigm, there is no distinction in masculine and there's no distinction in gender, no masculine and feminine distinction in the plural. And so, let me change back to white. This is just referred to as C. So this this would be three C P, third common plural. Um, when you get to the imperfect, which is the next paradigm, the one that's listed under the perfect in our column that's on the far left, the one I mentioned before in the big roadmap. Um, the imperfect does distinguish gender in uh, in the plural, third person plural. So you have three MP and three three FP, third feminine plural. In the perfect we just have three CP, one form. So no form here. Or this will do for both. You, two MS is you. So you're talking to a guy single guy, or uh, not single meaning by himself, uh, 2FS, again, you, in English, you would simply say you, when you're talking to a guy or a girl, a boy or a girl or a man or a woman. Plural, in English, we also just simply say you, whether you're talking to men or you, if you're talking to women. So in English, we do not make a distinction in gender or in number for the second person. You just use you all around. Unless you include y'all as part of your vocabulary, in which case there's a distinction between singular and plural. Y'all meaning talking to a group of people. But other than that, these are all the same. 
In Hebrew, however, we make a distinction between singular and plural, different forms, as does Greek, as does uh, French, um, and German, and Latin. We also, however, distinguish gender in the second person, and this is something that these other classical languages don't do. Um, so if you're if you study these other languages, this may, this may seem a bit odd. Um, I had someone tell me once, a former teacher actually, who speaks modern Hebrew and lives in Israel. He says that when you phone someone, if a child picks up the phone, you find yourself sometimes in an awkward position because you can't tell over the phone whether the child is a boy or a girl. But you want to speak to them, and so you have to decide quite quickly whether you're going to use masculine forms of the second person or feminine. Um, could you get your mother or something like that? You'd have to make a decision. And sometimes you don't know, so that's kind of funny, but we don't have that problem in English. Okay, so that's second person. First person, there's no distinction in gender, so we just use I for the singular, and we use we, these are the translations, we for the plural. So this is the paradigm grid that we will use for the perfect and for the imperfect. As we move down the forms, some of them won't have all these parts. This is the most complete one. And uh, when you move into participles and infinitives, well, participles don't have person, because they're a bit more like a noun, and infinitives don't have any of this, so they're even simpler. But this is the fullest form, and we'll list them in this way. Singulars over here, plurals over here, starting with third, second, and first person, and then for each of these two, it'll be masculine and feminine, masculine and feminine. Okay, let us actually do the perfect now. I keep saying we're going to do the perfect and then doing something else. Well, let's do the perfect for real. We'll look at each paradigm. Let's see. Yeah, let's write this up. Now, I want to get this all one page, so I'm going to start up here. So, pa... Pakad. This is a patach, okay? Get a bit longer. And the comments. Now, pakad is our paradigm word. We're going to use this for all our forms and all our binyan. It means to visit or to appoint. Um, that doesn't really matter for this. We're just using it as a placeholder word. And what's going to happen is, as you learn these paradigms, when you come across other words, you'll just put that word in this form. Now, one thing about our paradigm word here, pakad, is that the first letter is the Bagad Kafat letter. Pei is the Bagad Kafat letter. So it can take a Dagesh Lene, if you remember back to our module on Bagad Kafat letters and the different types of Dagesh, of Dagashim. If there is nothing before it, no vowel, then it takes the dot, it's a P. If there is something before it, it's a F, different pronunciation. So forms that have prefixes, you'll find that this will sometimes not have this this dogish if it's a got a prefix with a vowel before it. If there's nothing, then it'll be p. Now that's just a feature of this word. It's not really part of the paradigm. So if you substitute a word in there that doesn't have a begad kafat letter as the first one, then you won't have this issue. I just point that out. It's not a big deal. But this dot is not a dogish forte. It's a dogish lene. Okay, Pakad, that's, this is the 3MS form, right? Let me just go back for a second. We're talking this, this qu quadrant here, this corner, 3MS. And this, like I said, is the basic form that everything's built on. So Pakad is the basic form. Let us do the next one. If this is third masculine singular, singular call, then the next one would be third feminine singular. And I want to try to get everything on this page, so what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm just going to start with the root letters. Let's put the ending on. The ending for 3S, 3FS, third feminine singular, happens to be A, which, should remind you of something, is the same ending as the feminine singular for nouns. So that's a nice correspondence that feminine here matches that. So third person feminine singular has the a ending. 
Now, what happens here is this is a vowel suffix. This had no suffix. Here we're adding a vowel suffix. And if you remember, we can't have a syllable starting with a vowel in Hebrew. We can have CV, and we can have CVC, but we can't have V or VC or anything like that. So this vowel has to steal this last root letter to make uh, a syllable. And so our syllable division falls here. Now in Pakad we have two syllables. We have Pa, Kad, and so this closed this syllable. The Dalit closed the syllable. This was a closed syllable here. Here now it opens the next one, so it breaks the syllable up. And what happens is this one stays. Uh, we'll put our Dagashlana here. The reason this stays here, this stays normal, is because the comets is an important part of the perfect tense. There will be two forms we'll see, they'll be sitting down here, where that gets reduced. But if possible, it wants to stay because it's an important part of this, of recognizing this tense. And so if you're going to leave this here, um, how should I explain this? If you made this a closed syllable, so you've, you've, ta you've taken this for this syllable. If you make this a closed syllable, then this is going to have to be a kametz hatuf, because it is in a closed, CVC, unstressed, because the stress is over here, syllable. And when you see this symbol in a closed, unstressed syllable, that's a kametz hatuf, if you remember your rules. So we don't want it to be a kametz hatuf. We want it to maintain its long A status. So we put a metheg in. Remember the metheg lesson? Metheg means this vowel retains its full status as a long A. It also means, by implication, that we're effectively closing the syllable. We have a syllable marker here. And it means, also by implication, if you forget, go back to those modules, it also means that the next uh, Shiva, if there is one, is going to be vocal. Okay. What does all this mean? What this means is that we, we pronounce this pa ki da this is pakad, this one's pakada. Our vocalic ending has split this last syllable and formed three, three in total. Now that's the explanation for this. The way you're going to memorize this, the way I suggest you memorize it, is simply learn it orally. Learn to say it. You say pakad, pakada. You don't have to worry about all these details. You'll probably forget them. You can come back and listen to it later or read it up or whatever. But uh, just know how to say it and you'll be fine. It's especially important because later on when you get into reading uh, the Bible, especially the BHS, which is the Biblia Hebraica Stuttgartensia, the, the main uh, critical edition of the Hebrew Bible, they will leave this method off in the verb forms just because it's so common. And then you don't want to misread it and read pokda or something. You want to read pakada. So, I'm going to just pull this off because I want to keep a clean slate here as much as possible. Pakad, pakada. Then our next one. So now we finished third person. We're on to second person. Second person, masculine, singular. And this we'll put our dogish lenny right in. Pa, kad. And I'll add the ending. The masculine. Second person masculine ending, singular ending, is ta. Okay? And so we need to close this syllable with a silent shiva. And what happens here is that the stress actually stays on this syllable, which is where it was here. Here it didn't here we didn't need to mark it because it was on the last syllable. But here it stays there. This does not pull it over. Okay? The ta ending, this is a CV ending. This was a V suffix. This is a CV suffix. It does not pull the, does not pull the stress over. So this one's really simple. You just take the three MS form right here, and you tack on the ending, which is ta. You don't change anything in here. Okay. Next one. This one is the two FS. This is two MS. This is two FS feminine. Same kind of treatment. Pakad. And the ending, the suffix, is t. 
and we'll put our we'll close this off. We actually, I'm not sure if you marked this here like this or not. Now, this one is a bit odd. What you have here are two silent shavas, and so this is this isn't really a syllable by itself because this is a silent shava. So the way you read this is pakad. This is pakadta, pakadta. This is pakad, and you read all these these three consonants together as if they were one syllable. Um, it kind of goes against the rules, but what's happening here is that historically there was a hitic yud here, and it's been lost. Um, so this is a bit different, this one here. But in terms of how you add the endings, you can think of it as a CV. So I'm going to write it like this. I don't want to write CV. Someone's going to call me or email me and say, oh, you made a mistake. So it's not really a V, CV, but it functions as if it is because you don't change anything here, just like here. You just use the three mess form, you put it in here, you put it in here, and you add the endings. Okay. Now let's look at the first person, but you only have one. So you have pa. Okay, that's normal. Odd. And actually, we close that syllable and we add the ending, and the ending is t. And our stress stays here. So just like this one here. Pakad T. This is our one CS ending. So these three are nice and normal in terms of how you construct them. Use the three mass form, add the endings, don't change, don't make any reductions anywhere. Okay, that's our singular. Let's look at the plural. The plural is and let me just not write the vowels for a moment the suffix is oo okay now that is a vowel suffix just like this one this was a this is oo so if we just add a vowel we're going to have the same treatment here this is going to steal this you're going to break the syllable here this wants to stay so this has to become a vocal cheval you have your little method here you got three syllables Pakada, pakadu. This is called pre-tonic reduction. Remember, our tonic syllable is the syllable that has the tone on it. So the last one here, because it's not marked otherwise. That's so this one. Pre-tonic is the one just before it. Remember, pro-pre-tonic pro is is two off from the tone syllable. It's over here. But pre-tonic is one off, one behind the tonic syllable. So this one is reduced, and this is reduced. Pre-tonic reduction on these two. Okay, we have nothing here in this form, in this paradigm. It's just it's 3CP, so common, no distinction in gender. Now down here, I'm going to have to, this is a longer one, so let me make sure i got enough room. Oh, that looks like a schwa or something. Let me redo that. Okay, put our doggish lenny in. Let's put our root letters in first. Pakad. Now, what the ending is here, this by the way, is the 2MP. So we're talking to a bunch of guys. Second person, masculine plural. And the ending is tem. I know it's a bit crowded here, but you can see some space there. Now, this is a heavy ending. This is CVC. We've had a V ending. V suffix, vocalic suffix to these two. No suffix here, vocalic here. These are all CV, or at least we can think of them as CV. If you want to think of this one as CV. This is CVC. Now this behaves just like adding a plural ending to um, to a noun, like davar. Davar becomes devarim. Remember that with our nouns? It's called propitonic reduction. So you add this, it's, it's its own syllable in its own right, it doesn't need to steal the dalit because it, 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 it already has a consonant at the beginning of its syllable. And so we have three things, this syllable, this syllable, and this one. And in the propitonic position, we had a comets, and remember our rule, if there's a comets or tsere in the propitonic position, it will reduce to a shva. 
and in fact that's precisely what happens so we have p and this is the same as that pukad we have to add a silent shava to mark the end of the syllable we didn't need it here because it was the end of the word but if you're going to add something on the end and still have it at the end of the syllable you need to mark it so that's why we have this just like here these are just silent shavas and we don't need to mark the stress because the stress goes over here this pulled the stress all the way over so pukad tem heavy ending now the 2FS 2FP sorry the plural second feminine plural is exactly the same except the ending has a nun instead of a meme okay pukad ten make sure I got a goal there pukad ten pukad ten and so we have, let me actually just scoot that over just a tad, if I can. Okay. So we have propitonic reduction in both of these. And finally, we have our 1CP. We, 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 we ran, we sat, or something. So we have pa. Kad nu. Pakad nu. This nu ending is a CV ending just like these. Right? So it behaves just like these three, where you just take the three mass form down here and you add the ending. This this part is just like three MS, we don't change anything, the vowels don't change, there's no pretonic reduction, no propitonic reduction, or anything like that. Okay, now, why don't we, let's get rid of this stuff here, let me add some colors. Um, the way to memorize this, first of all, I would suggest this, learn to say them, secondly, write them out with the paradigm words, learn to write them. And then thirdly, it's a good idea to also isolate the endings so that you're aware of what those are. So why don't we color the endings so we know, so we can really see what's going on here. So first of all, 3MS has no ending. 3FS, let's make this pink. 3FS and this one here, if I can select them both. These are our vocalic endings. These are the ones with pretonic reduction. Let's do our propretonic reduction. Okay, these are the heavy ones. Let's see if I can select all this here. Okay, so we have pretonic reduction here because it's just a vowel. Here we have a full CVC syllable, and this is where we have a propretonic reduction. And then the rest of them, we'll color green. So you're going to get these in one fell sweep? I doubt it. Okay. So these are our CV, or at least they're functioning as CV endings. No reduction anywhere. We just add the ending on to the 3MS form. Okay. So we have pakad, pakada, pakadta, pakad, pakadti, pakadu, pikatem, pikaten, pakadnu. Okay, um, maybe we should look at this. See what like printed. I wanted to write this out, work work through it with you written, uh, so we could pay attention to all the details. If I just showed you this, then it'd be you may ignore some some things. Um, so why don't we actually just? I know we just did this, but we'll review it again briefly. Remember, you have propitonic reduction here. These two they go together, right? And we have sorry, 
I didn't say that right, pretonic reduction here with that methate that may or may not be there, okay? And then we have uh, propitonic reduction here because these are the heavy endings, and these ones have no reduction. You just add the endings straight on there. So vocalic, CVC, and then CV endings here. Okay, what I suggest, and let me just get rid of this here. What I suggest is that you stop the tape, if this were a tape. Don't go on to the next module until you know this paradigm and know it really well. Because the next module, what, what, what we're going to do is take a look at, well actually the, the module after next, we're going to take a look at what happens when you have gutturals here. So you put gutturals in this position, this position, this position, and things change. And it's easier for you if you l listen to that one after you already know this one. Because so if this one's in your head, orally and visually, you can see it, you know the details, then the rest of it's going to make more sense. So sit down, memorize this, memorize it orally. Um, maybe I should read it to you. Pakad, pakada, pakata, pakat, pakati, pakadu, pikatem, pikaten, pakadnu. Okay? Pakad, pakada, pakata, pakad, pakati, pakadu, pikatem, pikaten, pakadnu. So say it 20 times over. And then get a piece of paper or a few pieces of paper and write it down. And write it down 20 times. So that you really know what all the vowels are. So that you can reproduce this. You need to be able to reproduce all these little vowels. Okay? Um, if you do that, then the rest of your life is going to be that much easier.